Hey guys, welcome back to the weekly worm farm check-in. My name is Steve Churchill and I'm the owner of the Urban Worm Company. So last week we gave these worms our first helping of pumpkin. And in just a second, we're going to open up the bin and see how they liked it. If they respond the way that I think they did, we're going to see a lot of worms at the surface. And the pumpkin skin is probably still going to be there. So when we peel it back, I'm thinking we're going to see nothing but worms going after this stuff. As I mentioned in the last video, worms love pumpkin, which are a member of kind of a weirdly named family called the cucurbit family of uh, fruits, which includes watermelons, cantaloupe, and honeydew, and squash. And they're always worm favorites because they're full of sugar, they're full of water, and they break down really quickly. Compare this with something like broccoli, which is lower in sugar, lower in water, and takes a long time to decompose. You can see why pumpkins are a much more entertaining food. When I fed this bin last week, I mentioned that we probably wouldn't see fruit flies, and it's just too cold for that. But the cold comes with other consequences, and we've been dealing with the cold and using a seed starting mat underneath the bin, and it's working out okay. But one of the things I noticed is that even though it's providing heat towards the bottom of the bin, it wasn't really radiating towards the top of the bin where I kind of wanted it to. So I want it to be a little bit warmer, closer to the surface. So I moved the mat to the top of the bin and kind of had to curl it up a little bit to make it fit. Now, it's okay that we don't directly heat the vermicompost like the surface of it. So doing that would actually dry it out maybe a bit too much. So I'm hoping the mat just inside the bin does a good job of heating things up uh, towards the top of the bin. Anyways, I think we're going to like what we see this week. So we're about to check it out. But first, if you're watching this video, you're probably a new vermicomposter. And what I'm doing here is showing you how I can maintain a super budget friendly worm farm. But this video doesn't cover the startup of this bin. So if you're interested in the basics of starting a budget worm farm like this yourself, just click this little arrow above my left shoulder or check the video description. And that gives you a link to download the worm farm startup guide. It's a handy little PDF that I made that you can use to start up your own budget from a composting bin like this one. All right, let's open this bin up and see what's going on. All right, here we go. So like I said, we've got the um, we've got this heat mat that is in here. Kind of had to curl it up a little bit to make it fit. It's not the best situation, but hey, we're making it work. So let's just go ahead. I tell you what, let's just do the temperature first. It is cold here today in Philadelphia. It's about 32 degrees in the barn right now. It's uh, 36 and it's got 58% humidity. And so 36 degrees in the barn and it's looking like about maybe 42 degrees in the vermicompost. So um, let's open this thing up. And wow, this is actually not what I was expecting. So we put the pumpkin in last week and this is what's left of the skin. So the worms have either, uh Oh, I see some. <laughs> all right. I think, I, all right. I see what's going on. So I would have expected worms to be just all over the inside of this thing. And I'm sorry about the light here. We got some sunlight coming in. Um, but it looks like we've got evidence of black soldier fly larva. Um, that guy looks like he may be dead. That guy may be dead. Well, he fell out of my hands. Let me just see if I, uh. all right. So I'm seeing a lot more of these looks like black soldier fly larva, which I've actually never had here in Philadelphia. Now, if you're not aware of what black soldier fly larva ate are there, well, the larva of black soldier flies and they are voracious eaters like 75 times. They'll, they will process food waste 75 times faster than composting worms. So that is, you know, it's funny, we're here to compost, right? But we're not necessarily, we're here to get worm castings and not insect frass, which is a nice way of saying worm poop or saying larva poop. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm seeing there. The, the good thing is, is these things are not active. In fact, they look, they look kind of dead to me. So we may have, the, the cold may have killed them off. They're kind of a warm weather pest as far as I know, and I'm not that familiar with them. And I've never used them intentionally, but it looks like we use them here. So we've got some more pumpkin waste. They were probably on the pumpkin waste or the eggs were, and I just didn't realize it when we put the pumpkin in here. Anyway, this is a pretty amazing that, you know, this is, a, I don't know, it's been maybe a week or nine days or something like that. And we're just left with this. And it's actually a lot drier in this bin than I was expecting too. So I don't know if the dryness has anything to do with the black soldier fly larva, but Anyway, all of that pumpkin is just flat out gone. Now, I will reach in here and we're going to check. I mean, we've still got a really thriving worm population. Got some adults, got some babies. I mean, things things still look really good. It smells okay. And so, I mean, we're doing fine here. But the fact that I saw black soldier fly larvae in here kind of, well, number one, it explains why all the pumpkin are just gone. 
So yeah. Anyway, this is uh that's pretty amazing. Yep, see there's there's a larva right there. What happens is these things start out kind of light and then they get then they get darker as they enter the pupil stage and they can be in that stage for several weeks before they emerge. So yeah, this guy I thought maybe he was dead, but he's actually alive. So I'm just gonna take him and squeeze him. And one thing about black soldier flies that I've that I have noticed when I've come in contact with them in, in other farms is they actually smell kind of bad, <laughs> especially you squeeze them and you kind of smell the the juice that comes out of them. It actually smells like urine, which is strange to me. Um, ah man, so this is mixed results here, guys. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna lie, um, but the worms themselves look fine. Actually, kind of happy with how the worms themselves are doing. I just thought that we were gonna see just a mass of these, you know, worms just munching away on the pumpkin, but it looks like the black soldier fly got to them first. My plan this week was to go ahead and, and feed more pumpkin. I still think I'm going to do that though. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I think what I'm going to do is we're still going to feed pumpkin here and, and I'm not going to even add bedding because of the, it's still kind of dry in here. We're, we're not, you know, not seeing that excess moisture necessarily anywhere in the bin. So we're just going to add even more pumpkin. Um, in fact, it's going to be another really large feeding. I'm going to take this and these pumpkins are actually frozen out there. Um, so going to add this pumpkin in here, hope for the best. And um, yeah, what I would expect to see is the worms coming up and attacking this. Of course, it may be the black soldier fly larva that come up and attack this. And what I think I'll do is I'll check this out here in a couple days maybe even tomorrow and see if the black soldier flies uh, larva have worked their way up into this stuff. And uh, if they have, I'm going to just manually remove as many of them as possible, trying to think maybe what else we would do. Thinking maybe we can stop feeding the bin or, you know, take the heat out of it to try to kill off those larva. But anyway, that's it guys. Um, oh, check this out. That's pretty cool. This is, sorry, I don't mean to, these are two, two worms mating. We can get kind of close in on that. There's two worms that are just uh, in there making a baby. It's tough to see because they're kind of covered, but it, they got knots. They're they're kind of tied up in knots there. That is, I don't know if you can see that very well, but that is uh, pretty darn cool. Anyway, good things still happening in the bin. Things are just happening a little different than I thought they would. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Okay, so I learned a lot there. And the pumpkin was gone like we expected or kind of expected, but what we saw was likely black soldier fly larva, which I have not seen before in these mild Philadelphia temperatures. What I want to do is I want to compare what this bin looks like versus my urban worm bag, which I also fed a similar amount of pumpkin uh, to the same day that I did this feeding. And that urban worm bag does not have black soldier fly larva. So check out this difference. The pumpkin is still there in the urban worm bag, but it's nowhere to be seen in the budget worm farm. Like I said, the black soldier fly larvae are really voracious eaters, about 75 times more efficient than red wigglers. Now, I don't want black soldier fly larvae in my bin, but having them in there isn't the end of the world right now. They don't harm the worms, except that they kind of outcompete them for food. And the worms can actually eat the frass, which is the larva poop. It's another nice way of saying poop. Uh, and the worms can eat that and be okay with it for a while. And the colder temps should limit the reproduction of the black soldier fly larva. So I decided to push my luck this week, add another feeding of pumpkin. And over the next week, I'm probably going to spend some time manually removing as many larvae as I can find, assuming that we get a whole lot that come to the surface to eat on that pumpkin. If I can't get a handle on them, I'm going to remove the seed starting mat, stop feeding the bin for maybe a week or two. And that ought to make this worm farm a little less hospitable for those larvae without outright killing the worms. So this wasn't quite what I expected this week. But at the same time, I'm okay moving forward and giving them another helping of pumpkin. All right, guys, if you like this video, do me a favor. Give it a like, hit subscribe, and click that little bell to let you know every time we release a new video. All right, thanks for watching. We're going to see you next week.